I've been living on my sailboat here in beautiful Antigua for the past month, but now it's time to sail onward north to St. Martin, 100 nautical mile sail that I'll do completely alone. Disclaimer, I am not a great sailor by any stretch of the imagination. It's just what works for me and hope it works for you. This process is effectively how to sail from one country to another and cover great distances, so you can rinse and repeat this in your own sailing for future progress. All right, step number one on this process is simply picking your final destination. This means not only the country you're going to, but hopefully the anchorage that you actually plan on staying in. Right now I'm here in Antigua, and yes, I use Google Maps an absolute ton because their satellite images just can't be beat. And although I do also use Navionics, satellite images I find to be more accurate in a few ways than one. In this case, I want to head here to St. Martin. St. Martin is divided between the French and the Dutch side. The Dutch side costs money to check into, and honestly, in my opinion, it just doesn't have the same anchorages. The French side, like all French countries here in the Caribbean, are incredibly easy to check into. The food is delicious, and it's just a wonderful time. So I already know that I want to go back to St. Martin. I know I want to probably first go into here, which is Marigold Bay, which is a nice big bay that I can definitely get into, and a lot of boats will be anchored in there. And then I'm probably going to then move my way into the lagoon here, because i got a lot of projects i got to take care of. So step one, pick the final destination. St. Martin, Marigold Bay, the lagoon if I can. All right, step number two is picking my sailing route. So I use Navionics for all my navigation. I mostly use it on my cell phone, but I'll be using it on the desktop here today. And this is actually free to use, so anybody can go ahead and check this out. So I'm here in Antigua in Five Islands Bay. I'm gonna sail out to get away from any sort of islands. The trade winds will be blowing from the east, I can tell that pretty much all the time. I'm gonna sail a nice beam reach all the way up here to Barbuda. And that will let me check out a whole other country, which I've heard a lot of good things about. And then from there, I can again do a little bit of a beam reach, a little bit downwind, and then straight downwind into Marigold Bay for St. Martin. Cool, now we have our sailing route picked out, and we're gonna do this over a few days. All right, step number three, we're gonna decide on a good weather window. Like I said, here in the Caribbean, the winds are almost always blowing out of the east, maybe a little bit north, maybe a little bit south, but you can just count on east winds. Those are the trade winds. We're gonna be going straight up to here. That should be pretty easy. And like I said, over to St. Bart's. And then looks like we got a little bit of wind coming a bit more out of the north, so we might even go around. And that's fine because this plan is pretty much gonna change. You can almost guarantee that. So now we know that the weather window looks pretty good. There's no major currents like the Gulf Stream off of Florida. I always factor that in. Don't really need to worry about that. There's no hurricane offshore that's producing some sort of a crazy groundswell. I see no major storm system approaching, so it won't be getting rained on while we sail. All of these weather components are very important because you might not need to sail and might not want to go sailing when it's raining. You might really need to go and you might have to take just the best you can get in a short period of time. Giving yourself as much time to prepare to sail away gives you more time for the weather to be better for you and I really recommend that. Because as much as I love sailing on a beam reach, I much prefer to sail on a broad reach going downwind. Step number four is a little bit really for safety, but it's deciding on a drop off or an alternative route. So say I'm sailing up towards Barbuda and the wind just kicks, you know, comes up out of the north. That's fine. North wind, no worries. If I have to, I can loop around down here to St. Kitts. I know I can have a good protected anchorage in there. I can get a good nice sleep. And then the next day I can figure things out and get to sailing on again. So having a drop off uh, sailing location that's downwind in case the wind becomes a little less favorable, it's always good to have. If you break something, if you just get sick of the ocean, whatever it is, it's nice to have a backup. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever turned around, but it's nice to know that I could. I've certainly fallen off from my path when I sailed from Turks and Caicos to it's supposed to be Ocean World off of Dominican Republic. I ended up in Luperon instead. And you know what? I'm really happy I did. It was a great place. So having a drop off route, really important. All right, step number five now is waiting for a good weather window. I know I sort of said this before, but it is really important. Now that you have everything figured out, you know where you're going, you know what route you're gonna be taking, you know what weather you would like, you know where you can go if things don't go right. Number five, let's now leave as much time as we can to be prepared for a good sail. It's really nice to do that. Having winds like this that are super light and that are kind of barely coming out of the north, you know what, that would be great if I wanted to motor there, but if I can, I really prefer to sail. All right, step number six is scrap everything one through five. There's a whole new plan because now the weather has changed. Yes, I'm dead serious. This happens pretty much every time, but this time it happened in my favor. Instead of doing this in one, two, three legs, now I'll be doing it in one single continuous leg. Why? Because now we have close to 20 knots of wind going almost perfectly downwind to St. Martin. 
Now what that means is I'm gonna get that magical broad reach. And what's great about a broad reach is the boat is slightly pressed. You're not just being pushed along with the wind. So when there's a lull or when a wave pushes you too far, your sails will slack. No, no, no. With this, your boat will actually be pressed. This is a golden weather window opportunity that I am certainly not gonna miss. This is shaping up to probably be the best long distance sail of my life. So I'm really excited for this one. I don't like the distance. I wish I was only doing like 70 nautical miles, if I can be honest. And I could if I really want to. That is my new drop off location. It's going to be St. Bart's. But instead of it being on the west side of the island, it's going to be sort of on the north side here. So my final destination has not changed. It's very important. My sailing route has changed. I now know I'm going directly to it. Uh, my weather window has certainly changed. So now I have an even better weather window. I have a drop off spot, which we're about to go into here. And now the weather window that I'm waiting for is just about here. But going back over to the charts, we're going to take a look at Navionics. And as we can see on Navionics here, St. Bart's, when the wind is coming up out of the south or it's going to be out of the west, if I have to, I've got this area over here. I've checked this out on my phone, which has different settings, but basically there is places that I can anchor on the uh, north side and on the east side of the island. Okay, so now we have a full new plan. So now we can move on to step number seven, which is checking out of the current country. I just did that this morning, uh, went into the Antiguan uh, immigration. They really they have it all right here in Jolly Harbor. It's a really good setup. Uh, not as easy as the French countries, but for an English country, it's a really good deal. So it really didn't cost me much. I always make sure that I look nice when I go in there. I'm very respectful to the customs agents. Most countries, uh, customs agents, if I'm being perfectly honest, uh, they enjoy their position of authority, I'll just say that. Some more, some less. The French countries are great because you don't deal with any immigration person, really. You just go to a computer, type in a few things, they, I guess, assume you're being honest, and that's it, you go enjoy your crepe. That's why I love the French countries in the Caribbean. All right, now we have our final destination picked out. We know what our route is. We know what the weather window that we want is. We have an identifiable drop-off point. We have the weather window that's already here. We don't need to scrap this plan because I'm one, not even like, I'm like, I think I'm, eight hours away from it right now. Uh, we have checked out the country, and now step number eight is float plan with somebody you trust. And guess what? Surprise! He was sitting here the whole time. This is Jay. Jay is an experienced sailor who knows my boat, knows my sailing ability, and knows my route. And this is really important because if something does go wrong, he's gonna be able to sound the alarm. He has people that he can call, whether it be the Coast Guard of various countries, other sailors can put out an alert. It's very important. Not only that, when I made this plan, it was good to talk with him and see what his thoughts were on it. For instance, one thing that was important to talk about ahead of time is, should I raise my mainsail when I go to leave? And basically we decided no. I'm gonna be looking at above 30 knots of wind, going downwind will be very nice, and with uh, up to eight foot seas, Basically, I just don't need a mainsail for that, and that could actually make me a little bit too tippy and overdrive the boat. I also don't like uh, j accidentally jiving with my main. It's a horrible noise, and serious things can break that way. Being pulled ahead from the jib only, it's a fantastic way to go. So Jay has all that information. Step number eight, float plan, done. So now step number nine is an interesting one. It's your final prep. This means I'm gonna be stowing everything away. My laptop, for example, goes into a waterproof Pelican case up front. Everything gets put away. Um, books obviously are meant to be in that spot where they cannot fall out, but everything else on my boat uh, really only takes me maybe about five minutes to put away. Most of my cameras and stuff here is made so it can't leave here. Even this, oh, there we go, even this will not go anywhere. Another part of that prep is making sure your sails are ready, making sure the dinghy is up. So all you need to do is wake up and go. Now here's a really, really important part though of sailing, especially if you're gonna be solo. But even if you have people, I really don't think that, that cooking a full meal while you're underway is a hot idea. So instead, we food prep. This right here we're looking at is like four chicken breasts. Um, we got a marinara sauce and then several zucchinis. I probably could honestly just eat it like that, but I'm also gonna make some whole grain penne pasta. I'm gonna put all that, maybe a little bit of cheese into a big pot, and that's what I'll eat throughout the day while I'm sailing. I'll be able to come down here, spoon it real quick while the boat's going around, and then I'll be done. Now, because I am going downwind, honestly, it makes the boat a bit more finicky, so I won't be as stable out there, and I'll probably end up, unfortunately, hand steering a lot tomorrow, which I'm not looking forward to, to be totally honest. Hopefully I'm pressed enough that the autopilot is strong enough and the waves don't kick me around too much. If I'm able to go autopilot the whole day, I'll be chilling in my hammock up there listening to audiobooks, and that would be the best. 
Food prep like this though is, in my opinion, so critical. I think that trying to cook all of this, if you get into bad seas and you end up in bad seas for a long amount of time, is an absolute nightmare. I'm decent about being down below on a boat when it's sailing and cooking, but you have the fumes, you have the heat and it's stuffy. And honestly, it just, it makes you wanna be seasick. And if you have somebody who is at all inclined to be seasick normally, they'll 100% get seasick while they're doing this. So this is why I recommend cooking ahead of time, having it on the stove, ready to go. You heat it up, put it into a bowl, mm, good to go, keep sailing, stay strong. All right, step number 10 is sail out. This is where we're actually gonna leave the anchorage. Now I'm gonna film a little bit of this right now while there's still this beautiful sunlight, but I'm gonna be doing this at zero dark, four o'clock in the morning. So it's gonna be a bit different then. Like I said, mainsail, I think I'm gonna leave tied up. Jib is what I'm gonna be deploying. I'll probably kick my motor on for just a minute so I can bring in my anchor. But to be honest, with the wind like this, I can hand over hand the thing in, and that's pretty much it. We're gonna catch you guys again here in, I think I got like eight hours to sleep, which I'm gonna go play Frisbee right now. So get that last bit of exercise in, try to get a good night's sleep. And then first thing in the morning, get a good breakfast, get ready to go and get out there. It's literally, I'm heading that way for a hundred nautical miles, probably about 14 hours of sailing if everything goes well. Let's get to it. So getting my breakfast in, got a little bit of a good sleep there. That's good. I'm a little bit more groggy than I thought I'd be. I thought if I woke up early enough, I'd skip it, but no, I'm groggy. Uh, but the boat's pretty much ready to go. All I really need to do is slip off the anchor and deploy the jib. I'll probably just get a workout in and hand over hand that uh, anchor up, no motor. That'll be fun. Checking the weather. I would say the weather maybe even got a little bit more perfect. We'll see how it goes. One other really interesting update, and I would not normally be able to do this, but I'll take every advantage I can get, is a friend of mine is out there right now. He is going Guadalupe to St. Martin through the night. So we're gonna be almost on the exact same route, exact same time, everything. I might even just see him out there. He has Starlink, so he's been talking to me, and I was able to say, hey, how's the weather out there? What's the sea state like? He said, and I quote, Right now it's lovely, stars are out, wind is fairly consistent, 15 knots, mostly behind me. Uh, he also said, expecting a bit more of a rodeo tomorrow, meaning today now, but I'm lucky to be going downwind for it. Excellent, same, same as me. Estimated time arrival for me is around sunset. Wishing you a safe and fast sail. So that's very cool. I have effectively uh, a report from somebody who is out there. Does not get much better than that. So he is letting me know what's going on on his end. The wind feels uh, pretty light out there, but there is a nice breeze. I think I'm gonna stick to the plan of jib only. I think I'm gonna go with my full jib though, but I'm not gonna use a mainsail today. And that is a rather big decision because if I do wanna put up a mainsail later, it means I need to go up forward to my cockpit. When you're on a big ocean sail by yourself, you want to avoid going up forward to the cockpit to the foredeck as much as you can, especially do something like raising the mainsail, because that takes a lot of, for me, back and forth. Um, but if I have to raise the mainsail, it's because conditions aren't strong enough, and that means they should be light enough, so I'm not really too worried about it. I think jib only is the way to go. Let's raise the anchor and get out of here. I now have my VHF turned on, I've got my depth sounder, my autopilot, very important, turned on. Everything is stowed away that can be stowed away. That's pretty much it. Now I just gotta go up there, raise that anchor, and we're out of here. All right, we've got a nice little breeze here. Gonna bring back one line to the mast, tighten that in. This is kind of unique though. Normally I can sail off the anchor, but there's no real reason. I can just pull up the anchor and then just drift backwards with the wind and then uh yeah put open the jib while i'm heading downwind and cruise on out of here i've got a nice big bay behind me this is uh, all ideal and all planned for start pulling up the anchor here so i'm gonna be working with nice rusty chain hooray all right let the fun begin Not high tech, but it sure is reliable. All right, I'm technically sailing right now. I have no sails up. Just kind of floating on downwind. Gonna pop the jib open, have the anchors up. We're sails out of here. Kind of funny though, cause you know, we've got like mega yachts over here. 
Got that catamaran right there. You got another monohole, monohole over here. I do have things I gotta watch out for, but I should be free and clear of the bay here in just a few minutes. So normally I wouldn't have a light on for this, but I just wanna show it on camera. Now I open up the gym. Yeah, the dark. This also gives me a little bit more steering power. And it's that easy. That's why today is gonna be a good day. We're sailing right now at like three knots, slowly leaving the bay. It really was perfect conditions. There's one little thing for me to watch out for coming up here, but then I'll be past pretty much the entire island of Antigua. The wind direction, the bay, the anchorage, everything could not be more perfect, and this is really what we wanted by design. Now I can actually get into tonight's sail. As I've been leaving the anchorage here, not even out, the wind is just perfectly building up to what's supposed to be 15 knots. I'm at a pretty westerly angle right now, so I'm gonna start curving to the north once I get past some of these rocks up here. And uh, it'll pretty much then just be more or less just a dead straight for St. Martin. I've got another probably two, two and a half hours of darkness and then I'll be into morning light. That'll be fantastic so I can see stuff. So that is the mystery ship that I have been avoiding and trying to figure out their course. Kind of makes sense, it is a cruise liner. Yeah, that is a much larger vessel, so they have right of way, so it is my duty to avoid them. So I'm a little bit upwind more than I wanted to, but honestly, the sail is still just as perfect as it gets. Hey, now the camera can see 6 a.m. and a nice following sea, look at that. That was a good little surf. This one we should surf as well. Feels pretty good. I still kind of need more wind though uh, to keep the jib fully pressed because the jib does deflate pretty often. So I hope we get a little bit more wind. I hope we get a lot more wind to be honest because I need to go a lot faster. All right, that is the last of ships on the horizon here. Got a nice little sunrise coming up. Let's try to grab some more five minute snoozes here and there. Boat's still pretty rolly but we're moving smoothly ahead, so not too bad. I've still mostly just been taking naps. It's really been my sailing so far. It's a little chilly, I had to put a shirt on. I had to, to get my little blanket out. This so far is a very fine sea state to take for long distance. I'm very happy with this prediction. would definitely like more wind, I will say. I don't think we're gonna get 30 knots. I think they scaled it down to like maybe gust 28 at the end uh, near St. Martin. So that would be kind of cool, but I'm not making the headway I wanted to though. I think I'm only doing maybe like six knots. So I'm gonna have to reorganize what time I'm getting in then. Uh, it's the second time now my autopilot has uh, taken me off course here from the waves. It's slipping on the track, I can hear it. It's kind of afraid of this today. I really don't want to be spending the next 12 hours at the helm. I can help it, so hopefully I can get it to stay on a smooth course. It is 7.30 in the morning now. I've gotten about as much sleep as I really kind of want to get, and it'll probably just come and go throughout the day. Looking pretty good here. I'm very surprised to not see any other boats out right now. I feel like this is just the weather window of all weather windows. It is just about 9 a.m. here. The sea state is, well, I mean, it's, it's not bad. Still feeling pretty smooth, but super rolly. The autopilot is struggling with it. So I'm gonna go forward and put the whisker pole on which is a little bit of a hazardous operation, so I'm gonna be clipped in for it. So with this much spin and roll and stuff, I do not want to get thrown off the boat. There's no land within sight. Uh, I think a close land would be St. Kitts or Nevis, and that would be a bit far of a swim, so to not die, we're gonna be clipped in here. Let's get forward and do it. This will also be a good lesson for you guys to see how jack lines work. That's what these are called, is jack lines. So before you leave the cockpit, on the high side, there we go. Let's connect here. 
and it's made out of webbing, not rope, because webbing like this is flat, so it won't roll if you stand on it. If you use rope to do jack lines and you stand on rope, you can roll and slip and fall off that. So a little bit of knowledge for you there. Anyway, let's go forward here. Try to keep in mind, footage never shows the actual sea state. It always looks like a quarter of what it actually is on camera. So kind of just pull your line up along with you there. That. All right, now I gotta figure out how to film this while I'm up here. I gotta say though, it's actually really comfortable up here. This is gorgeous, so I gotta say this is, I thought I was gonna have a bit more wind, a bit more speed, so I'm a little disappointed at that. But this is still just an absolutely perfect sail. See how solo sailing can be a bit of a pain. If you have even just two people, so many of these operations are so much easier. But that's what we gotta do. All right, that looks a little bit better. I don't like that I have to attach it here. I sometimes can go here, but I didn't like the way this is lined up. Alright, so that was a huge pain in the butt, but now the jib is open more. We've got the whisker pole on there, so now it's much further up. It's not going to be rubbing against the shrouds. I have really a pretty forward and a pretty aft shroud on either side, which is great for mass support, but I hate how far forward that shroud goes because then it makes it so difficult to uh, put a whisker pole on. And if you do decide to put it between the shrouds, which I think I did with my first whisker pole, it'll snap your whisker pole or worse. So pretty tough there. This is just part of it though. You uh, adjust to your conditions once you get out. There's only so much planning you can do ahead of time so you really don't know what's gonna happen. But I will say that it's not as rolly as it was and I'm now catching a bit more wind. I'm still kind of like waiting on more wind. Like where's the 20 knots? You know, that's really what I need to uh, cruise along. It'll be much more stable if I can get that. But until then, we've got the whisker pull up. Again, as a solo sailor, I'm not a huge fan of going up there and doing the whisker pull, but it's decent conditions. I've got good light. I'm rested. I've got energy. Might as well go up and do it. 9.30 is usually when I start my first lunch. <laughs> I pretty much eat every hour on the hour if I had to guess. I get pretty uh, pretty hungry while I'm out here. A whole lot of nothing to do. Mostly I just listen to audiobooks. Yep. Listening to a really good one on, on the uh, Driz de Orden series. So if you're on Audible, check them out. But it's pretty much it. This is gonna be my life for the next 12 plus hours like in a St. Martin. Eating, laying down, listening to audiobook, checking the sails, checking the uh, Navionics, and that's it until I get in. It is just about 11 a.m. I've got still another 65 nautical miles to go. Um, hard to say what I'm averaging because it feels so stop and go, but I think I do have the current with me here. And obviously I have the waves with me, which the waves are a, a big part of that uh, as they come up and through just pushing me along. This is not the wind that was predicted. This is so much less, so bit of a bummer, but I'm still gonna get there, just definitely gonna get there in dark. It is now noon o'clock. I've spent most of my time right here just laying down. Haven't seen any boats or any land for a number of hours, really since I left Antigua. Listening to the audiobook and just passing the time. This is how you sail 100 nautical miles and try to enjoy it all the better. The autopilot is hanging in there. Though not great, but it has not been skipping for quite a while, so I'm happy to see that. There's not really too much else I can do about it. I'm just enjoying the ride. If it's gonna break, this actually isn't a bad time for it to break. At this point, I've got enough rest where I could, could hand steer the whole rest of the way and only be mildly annoyed. Um, but I'm heading into St. Martin, which is great because there's so much supplies to pick up there. Obviously, Island Water World's the place I always go to. It's got everything I need. I'm also gonna even be checking in there, so. It's just about two o'clock and I've had another legendary nap. The winds have come up a little bit more and now I can see some white caps, it's feeling a little bit better. I've been going dead downwind for a while now and unless I decide to sort of change course, I should start to think about taking out that out of there and going to more of a broad reach 
So we're gonna check out what will work best for the boat here. Okay, so the winds are picking up nice and good. I took away the whisker pole. It's supposed to only get bigger and eventually it'll get dark and I'll be happy to not have the whisker pole up there to mess with in the dark. The downside is, is my... Some fun waves we're getting now. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing is, is my autopilot is not keeping up with the head sail. Um, the way the boat is being balanced if I go a little bit off of dead downwind. So I'm gonna try to put in some time right now on like a broad beam reach to scoot over westward so I can then fall directly dead downwind as uh, night comes on. And I'll wanna be off the helm anyway and relaxing and that way at least I'll be dead, uh, dead downwind to my destination instead of having to cross the wind at all. So that's the, uh, that's the game plan for now. Let's see if it works out. So while I'm sailing along here, I wanna go back to step number six, which if I remember correctly was scrap everything and make a whole new plan. That still is always sort of on the table. The ocean conditions or the wind isn't quite what you expected or what you wanted. You're not quite ending up where you want to. You break something, who knows? So this wholesale, I'm still looking at that. I'm, instead of going around the west side, considering, probably won't though, going around the east side of the island, that's an option. Stopping in St. Bart's, that's an option. Uh, there's just, yeah, there's several different things that I can still do. I am ultimately happy I didn't put my main up, but yeah, it's just what you gotta deal with when you do these type of passages. All these little factors really start to add up. And right now, I am too far west, and now these waves will get me wet if I'm not careful. Going downwind really is a blessing. I mean, you can feel the wind on you. You just start going a little bit across it. But then as we start going up, especially towards 350 there, it'll feel all of a sudden like a calm day on the boat. It's really pretty magical feeling. It's three o'clock now, and I really have not made the progress I was hoping I was gonna make. There was just that long section where the wind just was not really very much, you know? So now the wind is turning on as predicted, which feels a bit better. I think I'm averaging only like six though, because we're just sort of at 20 knots, and it was supposed to be like 20 to 30 this whole trip, so it's a little bit unfortunate. Basically, I'm probably not gonna get to anchor until 10 o'clock tonight, and I think that there is a good chance I'm gonna end up going around the east side of the island. I just looked behind me and there's a sailboat like right on my ass. I have no idea why he's that close behind me. He's got a far larger, far newer, far bigger boat and a faster boat than mine. So why he's deciding to get this close to me is beyond me. I mean, maybe I know the guy, but I don't like boats being this close to me out here. There's just no need for it. Really strange. Yeah, when you're out in the open ocean, there's no real good reason to get this close to another boat. Like, I don't see the purpose in it besides showing off. All right, it's about 4.30 and yeah, I'd say my plan to definitely shifted a little bit. Instead of rounding the Once I do get lined up uh, just after St. Bart's, I want to go dead downwind for St. Martin. You see what I mean? The plan is always changing, always evolving. There really is no set one plan and only do that. That would not be a good plan if you had no other fallbacks. It is about six o'clock now. This is gonna be my last little entry while I've got some daylight. I am passing very slowly St. Bart's here. 
I think I might average five knots on this. I have a little bit of help from the autopilot, which I'm sort of co-steering the autopilot. I kind of know when it needs help, so that's how I'm solving that little problem. Still have a pretty wishy-washy ocean. That's also still a bit of a problem. Welcome back, it is 8 p.m. I just rounded some islands. They're all super scary, just rocks sticking up next to uh, St. Bart's. And now I'm on sort of my last downwind run towards the anchorage off the east side, St. Martin. And I should actually get some sleep there. So I'm hoping within the next hour, I'll be making my approach to anchor. It is 9.30 and I have just rounded the beginning of the eastern stretch of St. Martin, going between St. Martin Island and Tantamar, just over here to my right. It's 10.30, I'm on my final approach into Grand Case. And you'll notice it's a little windy right now. This is my first time today actually being dead into the wind, and I'll tell you what, I don't like it nearly as much as going with the wind, you know that? I'm gonna keep going with the wind every chance I get. Coming into a bay at night is not ideal, especially with so many boats anchored. Hoping everybody has their anchor lights on. I wanna get as close to shore as possible so I get protection from this wind, get a decent night's sleep, and then I'll be able to just get out of here quick in the morning to get to the final anchorage. All right, it is 10.53, so I'm a little ahead of schedule. That's good. We are anchored up. The anchor did not set for a second and then it caught, which was interesting because it's blowing like 30 knots out there. Uh, yeah, it is It is very, very strong wind, so I'm very happy to be done. I am very close to where I need to be in the morning to get into Lagoon to be at my final anchorage. And two things interesting happened on this trip that are just no other way to explain them, but just check this out. This USB plug has not been working for months. Now it works, that's cool. The meal that I prepared less than 24 hours ago that has been hot the entire time, this pot here, I thought it tasted kind of funny. And check this out. Some sort of a mold was able to grow while it was being cooked and just exploded in there. I don't know if I should be sending this to the CDC or if I should send myself to the CDC. I had three bowls of this. How nasty is that? I feel fine, feel totally fine, got plenty of energy. Um, yeah, but just somehow all the food in there it has some super fungus growing on it. Pretty weird, pretty weird. So I'm gonna try to get everything put away, shower all the salt off of me, and then go to bed. Let's get after the rest of this in the morning. Good morning. I slept like a rock. Slept in the aft cabin, so it's a little more stable because the boat's doing this all last night with this 20 to 30 knots we got in here. But look at that sunrise. Woo! So that's what two people anchoring looks like. It's gonna get in, gonna duck underneath the bridge, gonna get anchored up in the front of the lagoon that I've been before, and then hopefully can get uh, errands and such done. All right, now comes the fun part where I get to haul up the anchor with 20 knots of wind on the bow. I gotta use the motor today. So right now I'm gonna motor up ahead towards the anchor, and then I will slap it into neutral, put the autopilot on, and go up forward. Try to bring what I can. I'll do that several times until I have the anchor chain up. yachts and these cargo ships. I've never seen this many boats in here before. So now I have to make sure I'm dodging these anchor chains that are coming down. And unfortunately it means I have to get kind of close to the back of these boats, which I don't like doing just for the sake of invading their privacy, but I don't want to hit an anchor chain. That'd be horrible. All right, we made it. And there's at least two boats here. Uh, milling and waiting for the bridge to open so they're gonna be doing what I'm gonna be doing just kind of working around doing a whole lot of nothing and uh, The bridge should open in just about five minutes here outbound traffic will come through and then we'll be able to go in Now this boat was behind me on the way here, but that doesn't stop them from just jumping ahead of me in the queue 
Honestly, every time I come through here, I'm always amazed by the lack of thought by some of the other boaters. Just kind of the price you pay. You take a deep breath, you get over it. Only one boat outbound. The chain started, everybody's now going on in. Check it out, here we go. So look at this, you got these killer rocks all right here. The killer rocks right there. A following sea behind us. When the wind comes out of the north, I can't imagine coming through here then. All right, here it comes, moment of truth. This is just line up as close to the side as I feel comfortable. Like I said, it's tight even for my boat, so for a catamaran, it must feel so much tighter. Let's go ahead and set the anchor here. And this will be home for who knows how long. Alrighty, moving backwards, but anchor is down now. Alright, now as the boat moves, this should start to catch. You see how much water we're churning here. Look at that, we've actually got pretty good clarity considering how much is going on here. All right, now for the important part. You put your foot on the line and you feel it and you look at it and you ask yourself, is the anchor slipping? And I'm gonna say that is a definite no. So the boat is ready for anchor life. I got my side curtains on that my good friend Jay just made for me. It's gonna rain soon, so I'm gonna stay nice and dry. We're almost to the end of what it takes for me to just sail from one country to another. Next step here is to drop the dinghy, go into town, get that morning crepe and that morning croissant, and then go check into the country, and then I'll be set. All these lines I've got on here are meant to keep the dinghy from moving while I'm out there sailing and rolling around. All that rolling and stuff, it, it's, there's nothing good about it. It damages things, it throws weight, shock loads, none of it's good, so any way that you can secure the dinghy so it doesn't go anywhere is a positive. Remember to always take the plug out of your dinghy in case water comes in so that way it can fall out or else a dinghy will fill with water and be literally like 300 pounds heavier. It would break the whole structure if that ever happened. And that's it, we're ready to go. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. There is no shortage of restaurants to choose from. However, the good ones are already filled up and many are already out of croissants because it's like 10 in the morning. All right, so today I'm gonna to show you how to not lock up a dinghy. You do not put the chain through somebody else's bowling, hence keeping them here until they have to undo their very nice secure bowling. This is the improper way to do it, especially when they could have just locked over there, they could have just locked over there, but no, they wanted to put it through mine. So big shout out to whoever owns this particular dinghy. Way to go. Hey, now that I've gotten my coffee, my croissant, and my crepes, it's time to check in here at Island Waterworld on the French side. This is my preferred place to check in. The Island Waterworld here is located just near where I was for my breakfast. Normally it's really common here. There isn't all this uh, wind. Normally the wind's out of the east, but hey, today's a bumpy one. This is what I love about the French country, is you just come in here, do a little bit on the computer, and you're done. That's it, you're checked into the country. Costs like five euros or something, super easy. So I was incorrect, it does not cost five dollars or five euros to check into the French country, at least here. It costs two, two whole dollars. Bring your passport and your registration and that's all you need. I'm now checked into the country. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching through the whole journey. That was quite a sale, and that's kind of how it normally goes. One plan leads to another plan. You gotta make a new plan, overcome, and adapt. So that video turned out a lot longer than I wanted it to be. I hope you enjoyed it, but I wanted to go through the steps real quick that I actually took just to recap everything that happened. Step one was I had to just pick my final destination here, St. Martin, in this particular uh, bay, this particular lagoon. It's just such a good anchorage. I know this is where I want my boat to be for fun, for errors, for everything. Step two was picking my sailing route. And obviously I had one idea for that, going up to Barbuda, then St. Bart's, and then to uh, St. Martin. And if that had worked out, it would have been a great smooth sail each time. I would have been able to have plenty of sleep, plenty of rest in between. I will say again, I don't like sailing more than 70 nautical miles in a day if I can help it. 
uh, it, even then it has to be a really good wind direction. I'd say anything over 50 nautical miles and I need things to be behind me if I'm going to make that with the light. Step number two is deciding on a good weather window. Uh, for going up to Barbuda, it originally was an east wind, which we've always got here. I just kind of had the island stacked in a good way for myself, so it was pretty easy to manage. And then step number four was identifying drop-off routes and other alternative anchorages. It's really important, I can't stress that enough. It's nice to know that if the trip doesn't go quite, quite the way you want it, you can head downwind or go someplace different. I really like knowing that. It gives me a lot of confidence when I'm out there, and that we don't have to scramble to find something last minute. You want to do this ahead of time while you have a clear mind, plenty of rest, and you're thinking straight. Then to rule number five was waiting for the weather window. I had plenty of time to wait for it originally as the weeks were coming on. I knew I wanted to sail out at the end of the month, so that worked out well. Number six, kind of my favorite and just always holds true, scrap everything, new plan. Instead of wind out of the east, it was going to be wind out of the south, 20 to 30 knots originally, but obviously even that changed. Rule number seven then was uh, checking out the current country. It wasn't really very hard at all for the English country of Antigua there. They make it pretty simple, but it still is a process. So you want to give yourself plenty of time for it. And in the Caribbean, they like to be closed for any number of reasons. All the businesses do. So give yourself enough time for that. Step number eight then, it would have been float plan with a competent sailor. My good friend Jay is just that person. It's just a really good thing to have. And I mean, if you have to, just go talk to another boat. You know, Say you didn't know anybody else in your anchorage. You could just go over and be like, hey, listen, I'm new to this. Here's where I'm going. Can you help me and give me a float plan? You'll probably make a friend for life, to be honest. Uh, the sailing community is incredibly hospitable. I, I know of no other community. I've done RV life, van life, backpacking, spear fishing, surfing, free climbing. No community has ever been as welcoming, helpful, and hospitable as the sailing community. So feel free to use that as a resource. Then to number nine was the final prep. A lot goes into that. Uh, stowing everything, shopping everything down, getting my boat ready in case I get into the worst storm. That's how I almost always go out. Unless I can see where I'm trying to get to, I always prepare for that. You want, preparing for the worst, hoping for the best, really is the best strategy there. And then the meal prep was very important as well, and having water ready to go, entertainment. Basically, you want to be able to, especially if you're solo, stay up in the cockpit and not really need to leave for anything. So I was all set with that. Number 10 then was setting sail from Antigua from the anchorage and getting clear of the country. Sometimes you can leave your anchorage, but maybe you need to go up around the island a little bit. In my case, I had a few rock islands to dodge, and that's kind of all one step to me of getting clear of that. And then step 11, you're now sailing the distance alone in the open ocean. You have very little that you can run into. There are fads and floats that are out throughout the Caribbean islands. I've passed several. And uh, so you do kind of want to watch for those. And then of course, there was that one random guy that decided to be right behind me. I don't know why he got that close. It doesn't look close in the footage, but I'm using a super wide field of view for my camera. Uh, so trust me, it was, it was plenty close, but it's more the sake of space, you know, close in terms of parking is, you know, a couple, a couple feet, maybe an inch or two, but close in terms of sailing in the open ocean is, uh, well, when I can see their facial expressions, I'm like, that's way too close. Uh, anyway, is what it is. It wasn't really a big deal. The step 11 of sailing distance alone, that really takes up obviously the majority of the video and that's where most of this, the lessons are to be learned, although there may not be immediately apparent. Lessons like just always, always being ready to change your plan. I deleted a lot of the footage, but trust me guys, my plan changed like eight times while I was out there because the conditions kept being like this or like that. So yeah, a lot of things had to change there. Sailing uh, past St. Bart's and its tiny rock islands at night in the pitch black, that was a little, little bit of a pucker factor there. So I got through all of that. And then step 12, the final approach, that was actually a fun one, going around the east side of St. Martin. I had a great wind, picked up a ton of speed. This is an important step because you're coming into a place and you don't want to hit anything on your way in. You want to, I don't know, just make sure you get in there safely. So all of that was really good. I had my final approach then, step number 12, final approach uh, up into the anchorage, got anchored there in Marigo Bay, had a really good night's sleep. Then the next morning I got into the lagoon, got my boat anchored up for the sort of the second time there, but that way I was in a good staging area to then dinghy up, get that delicious breakfast, that's an important step, and check into the country. So that's all 13 steps. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Hope you're entertained by some of the surfing I got to do with the boat out there. But either way, leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys thought. Let me know what else you would do different. I'm sure there's plenty of sailors that are gonna be watching this video going, oh no, he missed a step or he missed 10. You know, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. We're always learning. So that does it for me. I'll see you guys on the next adventure. Cheers. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. 
I hope you feel inspired to begin adventures of your own. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for an exclusive in-depth look at this adventure lifestyle and to further support my channel, become a member of my Patreon crew. Link in the description. I'll see you on the next adventure.